or disappointed today, let me just say something to you. It may feel like Friday, but Sunday's coming. It may feel like Friday today, the good Friday, being crucified, but Sunday's coming, resurrection Sunday's coming for you. Amen? Just believe God this morning. Praise the Lord. If you could turn to Romans chapter 4, we're going to do a lot of scripture flipping back and forth. I know it's kind of early. I know that we haven't gone into our daylight savings time mode yet. I can tell. That's okay. We're here. The Spirit of God is here. That's all that we care about. Jesus was not too moved by the, the, the crowd or the lack of it. As a matter of fact, he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. So we're there. he's here this morning. So turn to Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Uh, before I go on any further... Uh, sometime, I think maybe it was in the 80s, maybe 80s or 90s, there was a very famous, a, a song that was made very famous by a secular group. It was called Don't Stop Believing. And that's the title of my message this morning. But the reason, uh, and I'm not boasting in a secular song, but this past Christmas, uh, my daughter, my daughter's class, my youngest daughter's class, Gabby, they had a class project to do. And they were supposed to put on a play for the school. And uh, it turned into a bigger thing than they thought, and they actually did a presentation for the entire school. And what they did was they took that song, they made it a christmas theme song. They, actually, I think it was titled Don't, Don't Stop Believing. I'm not positive. But they took that song, and they transformed the words. They kept the lyrics. I think that's the music, right? But they transformed the words to talk about Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, how he was born. And that stuck with me so much, apparently, it had such an impact because of what the, how they were able to do that and, 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 and keep it in the spiritual sense that I used that title this morning. So don't stop believing in Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Let me read that to you. I believe it's up there, right? Oh, I like that. I didn't do that. That was good. Romans 4, verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, last, this past January, we did our Daniel fast. I believe it was on January 20th. I did a Wednesday night Bible study. It talked, I said something to the degree, believing is seeing. And I used Hebrews chapter 1. This is a continuation of that. And it kind of goes a little bit along with the song that was just sung this morning. But Abraham believed God, it said, and it was counted to him. It was deposited into his account for righteousness. Abraham was a little bit unrighteous as he went along life. He did a few things that didn't make God happy. Hello? Welcome to the club, right? <laughs> okay. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, and he said, Abraham, or at that time his name was Abram, I want you, I'm leading you, I'm telling you to get out of this land, the land of Haran, or Ur of the Chaldeans, and I'm going to bring you to a place that's going to be all your own. A promised land, if you will. I don't think he called it the promised land, but that's what it was down the, down the road in the end of Genesis. And I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you a great people. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He was 75 years old when he got that message from God. 75. I want you to keep that in your memory banks. When he was 95, the Lord came to Not that he came to him only after that, but he came to him again and said, Abraham, I'm going to give you your own child. Because Sarah was barren at that time. And to be barren in the, in the Old Testament or in biblical days, it was a black mark on you. You could not propitiate the, the Messiah, if you will. Okay, So the Lord said, I'm going to give you your own child. He is going to be the one that carries the lineage. And this great nature that's going to be built up is going to come through you. That was, He was 95 when that happened. At the age of 100, Isaac was born. Sarah was 90. When he was born, I believe that was when the promise was made. Now, listen, you could do the math, right? 100 minus 75 equals, I know it's early in the morning. Okay, math 101. That's 25, okay? 25 years went by when the, after, before the, after the Lord had said, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm bringing you out of here for a good reason. 25 years. Abraham, along the way, he may have messed it up. He did mess it up, but he didn't stop believing. Abraham, along the way, may have tried to help God a little bit. We all know the Ishmaels in our lives, don't we? The Ishmael is still existing today, and if 
uh, uh, Abraham hadn't messed around and tried to help God a little bit with God's plan, we wouldn't have the Ishmaels that we have today, I think. Who knows? He might have done it anyway. But along the way, along the waiting, he tried to help God out, tried to help God's plan a little bit. And it didn't go so well, did it? That was just Abraham. And, you know, the Bible says that these things are written for us because we can identify with these things. We identify because in, in our walk through life, there are, some, there are things that we go through that should kind of like be illuminated like, oh, wow, that happened to Abraham. That happened to another character we'll talk about shortly, Joseph. That happened to Daniel. That happened to so-and-so. They're, to, they're put there for us to re realize that we don't go through this alone. Okay? It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. I know whom I have believed. We're going to look at three words this morning. Believe, faith, and promise. Actually, believe is right there. Faith is right there. I will trust is there too. It's a promise. Okay? Joseph, in Genesis chapter 37, he was 17 years old. He dreamed a dream. Listen. Joseph already had some problems with his brothers. They were already envious because he was dad's favorite. Parents, don't make one of them your favorites. He was dad's favorite. He had a coat of many colors just to ind indicate that he was dad's favorite. As if it wasn't enough to say it, we had to see it every day. So he wasn't in good standing with his brothers. But he had a dream. And he dreamed the dream that all the sheaves, his brother's sheaves, they all bowed down to his sheaves. Listen. He was already in bad light with his brothers. Now we're going to bow down to you. I don't, I don't think so. Now they got furious. They were envious, furious, and to the next level. He had another dream in, chap in uh, chapter 37, verse 9. Not only did the stars bow down to him, but the sun and the moon bowed down to him. And the brothers, they went from furious to envious, to now they hated him. There's no way. As a matter of fact, even Jacob was a little like, ah, oh, 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 guy, yeah. This, this doesn't happen in this culture. You take your place. The sun and the moon do not bow down to you. Sun and the moon being the mother and the father. But he had the dream. He was 17 years old when he had a dream. He was 17 years old when the Lord spoke to him. Maybe he, you know, got a little carried away with his dream. But at the age of 30, the fulfillment of that dream came when he stood before Pharaoh and he was exalted to second in command of Egypt. In between the dream and the exaltation, you know what happened to him? He was hated by his brothers. He was questioned by his father. He was sold into slavery. He was falsely accused of immoral conduct. He was put into prison. He interpreted the butler and the baker's dream. Glory to God, I'm going to be all set. He was forgotten in prison. Finally. Finally, they remembered him, and he stood before Pharaoh. Now listen, he ultimately went from the pit to the palace. But listen, do the math one more time. If he was 17 years old when he had the dream, and he was 30 years old when he got to fulfillment, how many years? 30, good, math 101 is working. 13 years he's waited, a little bit less than Abraham, but 13 years. Not 13 days, not three chapters, because we get caught up in our little chapters. It was the next chapter where the great thing of that, there's a time element. 13 years he waited. But he knew whom he had believed. Joseph was persuaded. He held what he had said. As a matter of fact, when he was accused of uh, his immoral, con immoral conduct by part of his wife, he said, how could I do this thing against God? He held that in esteem in reference to God. He believed that God was able. He had the promise. He had the, vision, the dream, but it didn't come to pass. 13 years. Abraham's didn't come to pass for 25 years. That is something uh, relative to believing. How about faith? You know, there was a man 
in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24, he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. That was the father of the demon-possessed son who watched his son get flailed away constantly. And Jesus asked him, do you believe? He said, I do, but help my unbelief. The disciples used the same phraseology or close to it in Luke chapter 17, verse 5. He said, Lord, we believe, increase our faith. They told him that when he was explaining to them, he was teaching to them about forgiveness. Oh, boy, that's another topic for another day. I, I want to forgive God. Help my faith to be able to forgive. Increase my faith. Listen, I will walk. And by the way, I talk. And if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk, otherwise don't talk it. In the church today, there's a lot of talking, but there's not a lot of walking. And the world is turned off. I wasn't going there, but I'm going to do it now. The world is turned off because we talk, 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 and we can't walk it. We don't even know what it means to walk it. We know how to talk it, though. And the, and the, and the airwaves are littered with talk, talk, talk. You can hear it every day. I think every time I'm up here, I mention about the, t the airwaves that are out there. Everybody is chirping about something to say. But nobody wants to walk it. Our walk and our talk needs to be one of faith. But listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, We don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. It's a walk of faith, not one of feeling. Oh, I didn't feel like it. The worship team didn't lead me into worship today. Well, maybe if you would help the worship team, you'd be there already. It's, not a, it's, it's a, one of faith, not one of circumstances. But you don't know the things that I'm going through every day. Join the club. You must through many trials and tribulations enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. That means they're coming your way. They're coming my way. We're not exempt. It rains on the good and the bad. The sun come, shines on the good and the bad. This morning it came up. Whether we were free, whether we were slaves, whether we were, we were murderers, whether we weren't. It came up. It's one of faith, not one of physical might. <clears throat> we walk and we talk by faith. The, the, the gospel, it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, that one of the problems the Hebrews, the children of God had, was that the gospel, or that the word of God that they heard, they didn't mix it with faith. I mentioned last time I was here that faith was this, is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. And I elaborated the, the breakdown of those two words. But listen, God's word cannot profit us if we don't mix it with faith. It's not an ordinary book. It's not an ordinary book that can lead people to, inspi to be inspired. It is spiritually discerned. We have to activate it with faith. It doesn't work in the same realm that the, 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 the next bestseller does, even though the Bible is, continues to be the bestseller in all of history. It is activated by faith. The people of God did not enter the promised land. You know why they didn't enter the promised land? It took them, first of all, they should have taken them like a month to get to where they were going. It took them 40 years because they couldn't grasp what God was doing and where God was bringing them. And you know what? They didn't want to grasp it. They wanted to have their own way, and they constantly murmured. They constantly complained because, you know what? I believe God, but I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're going, where you're bringing us, God. I already told you where I was. You didn't listen, or you didn't believe, or maybe both. God's people did not enter the promised land, not because the giants were too big. Not because the back. Could you stand up for me, Kwame? Not because the battle was too hard. He's got battle gear around this morning. Come on. You go to battle, you got to go with battle gear. Don't say, oh, this is too hard. This, I can't. The battle is not one that we do with flesh and blood. The people we wrestle with, it's not the, it's not the people that are your problem. It's the devil that's our problem. You know, when things get provoked, it's not because people just like, I don't like Janice today. I'm going to pick on her all day long. Well, the devil's provocation is there. They didn't enter the promised land not because they were too few in number, but because they did not mix God's word with faith. When the report came, they didn't believe it. Oh, they believed, but they didn't have faith. 
They believed in something. What did they believe in? They believed in their own report. They believed in the wrong report. They didn't believe in God's report. You know why? Because believing in your own report, believing in my own report, it's easy. It doesn't take any faith. That's why when you hear things, it's easy to put someone down. That doesn't take much faith. Believing in God's word, that requires faith. Believing God's report, that requires faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, it just doesn't happen. We have to activate it. It just didn't happen for Abraham, and I'll use these two as an example. It just didn't have happen for Abraham. It just didn't happen for Joseph. A lot of things went in between those years of waiting and receiving. A lot of lessons were learned. You know, when, 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 when God tries to show us things, they may seem like simple illustrations. But that's all Jesus taught him, simple illustrations, so that we can grasp what it means. When you get a revelation about, oh, I never, I never saw that word like that before. Whoa. Then that's a revelation that you need to remember. Because it's spiritually, discern, it's spiritually impacted. They didn't believe because their report didn't require any faith to believe. They believed in something. Oh, I'll believe it when I see it. That's basically what they were saying. I'll believe it. And they were right in it, too. How could they miss it? And we've said the same thing along the way. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, listen, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I got bad news for you. We can't fight the good fight without faith. We're going to get beat. You can't finish the race without faith. We're going to lose. We'll never enter into the rest or the promise that God has without faith. Listen. Faith isn't just like some little thing that we can conjure up in, in, in the early days of my Christianity. The hyper, the hyper faith movement came into being and, and everything was, oh, I will name it and claim it. I believe it. I don't see, but I got it. Like, guy, if you don't pull, open your eyes while you're crossing that street, you're going to get hit by that car. Would you please wake up? That's the kind of stuff it was. It sounds foolish, but when it became a movement, it was catching people by storm. It was just another, I hate to say it, a fad. And the church is guilty of jumping on fads at times. You know, the very fads that the world discards, the church sometimes picks up. We'll never enter into the rest that God has for us, the promise that God has for us without faith. It's not a little thing, oh, God, okay, what's, what's this thing, what's this faith? Oh, yeah, I, have faith. I can move mountains. When's the last time we moved a mountain? When's the last time we said, hey, son, could you stop for a while and, you know, make it last a couple extra hours, not just daylight savings time? It's not something that can be manipulated. It is something that is deposited in our lives that we can grasp and understand. What is my, what Paul says, I have kept the faith. It's running a race on a regular basis. It's learning like Abraham and Joseph did. And others in the Bible did from their mistakes. Not that you want to make a lot of mistakes. But when you make them, you learn from them and you move on. That's what increases your faith. That's what helps you to believe that God's for you and not against you. Because when you don't, you get right into the rut. You become like the children of Israel. I'll only see it when I believe it. The woe is me syndrome. How about promise? You know what a promise is? A promise is a declaration or an assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. That's a promise. How many times have you promised something to somebody? Hey, guy, don't raise your hand. Come on, we're all there. I'll, you know, and the easiest story to tell, I'll, I'll be there, t- I'll pick you up. Yeah, you forget. You're supposed to pick, that's just a simple one, but how many times have we promised forgotten. Or, not that we've forgotten, we promised because it was just something that we said. It was of no value to us. 
God's promise is valuable. It isn't just something that he says. It isn't just something that, oh, well, you know, i got to fill up this book with some words. Don't waver while you're waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. Romans 4, verse 20 and 21 says, can, can you put that up? Romans 4, verse 20 and 21 he, that is, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. That's just one, Abraham. There's so many others. And they could be Joe. They could be Sally's. They don't have to be way back in the old biblical days. They're right here in this place this morning. Don't waver while waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. Listen, Abraham did not waver, and he was ultimately rewarded. Yes, it was 25 years later. Yeah, we had, we had the, the time of prayer and fasting in January, and March is here, and it don't feel like anything's happened. Don't waver until, something ha until the, the answer comes. Joseph didn't waver, and he, he ultimately re was rewarded. I'm not saying that because we prayed last two months ago, you're going to become the prince next week, next month, in 10 years. You know, the sad thing for parents, they have to come to a realization. You know, we all think that our kids are the greatest in the world and they can all do great things. And you know what? Uh, uh, sometimes we parents get sold a bad bill of goods. We think that our kid is the next superstar, the next whatever. And sadly enough, not many are going to make it. That, that's the odd. We can encourage them to aspire to do the best that they can be of what God wants. But chances are they're not going to become the next near hand. If you know soccer, that's for sure. But we get sold a bad bit of go bill of goods. As a matter of fact, I gave it an explanation. Um, uh, uh, we took a different route with one of our daughters relative to that particular sports. And we didn't go the route that, you know, a lot of people were going. They paid lots of money to get their kid into a particular sports program. The greatest thing that you could possibly have. And there's college coming your way. They'll be knocking at your door. Well, I compared what maybe we did with what somebody else did. And our daughters are in the same category. Doing the same thing. You know why? Because it wears off for them too. And unless you're that dedicated and I think Pastor Richard mentioned it last week about the Olympics. Unless you're that dedicated, it's not coming your way. It just doesn't fall off a tree and says, here it is for you today. No, there's a lot of dedication. There's a lot of commitment. There's a lot of sacrifice. And a lot of disappointments for parents down the road. So forget about the disappointment and realize, I'll spur, I'll spur my child on to do the best I think she or he, he can. And then, you know what, leave the rest of God. They didn't enter the promised land because they had no faith. They were believing in the wrong report. Apostle Paul says, we, we, we can't fight these things without faith. We don't waver because I prayed, but it hasn't happened. I prayed, I'm here with all these reports for other people, but it hasn't happened for me. God's word, listen, has never failed and it never will. Can you put up Joshua 21 and 45 and then 23, 14? God's word has never failed and it never will fail. Here's the first one. Not, this is Joshua talking to the people of Israel after they inhabited the promised land. And he reminds them and he says, listen, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All, capital all, Capital all came to pass. All came. Listen, that's not just hyperbole in the Bible. If you think that's what it is, and you know, well, you better read it again. All came to pass. God didn't just throw that in there. What's the next one say? This is again uh, Joshua talking. Behold, this day I'm going to, I'm going the way of all the earth. He's going to die. And he's reminding them. And you know in all your heart, you know. In your heart, you know. Listen, if you've been touched by God, you know in your heart when something's right and when something's wrong. You know when God's doing something. We can run and hide all we want like, like Adam and Eve, but we know in our heart, Zappo, God touched that nerve right there. 
He said, you know in your hearts and all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one word of them has failed. We know when God touches that, you know that, that staple button? When he touches that, you know. Whether you're far from the Lord or you're close from the Lord to the Lord. When you've been waiting for something, you know when it makes a click. It, the lights go on. Because we can't run from that because we're, we're spiritually reborn. It can't be explained in the natural. God's word has never failed and it never will fail. That's the promise. We have, we have something to look to in the word of God that's 100%. Now, you know these 100% guarantees. Anybody ever try to follow up on a 100% guarantee? There's always little gimmicks that, that, you know, little fine print. There's no fine print in the Bible. You know, you ever hear like, uh, you know, on the radio, they're advertising something. Uh, uh, usually it's about cars. And then all of a sudden, the guy's reading and speeding, and he's talking about all these little things that don't apply. And that's become more important of the story than what the actual thing is about. Because it's all little glitches and catches that don't apply. Oh, uh, yes, yes, it's sky, free sky miles, but you can't travel on a Tuesday. You can't travel on a Saturday or Sunday between the hours of 4 and 6. You can't, you can't go to such and such, but what did I get it for then? There are no catches with God's word. There, are, there is no fine print. There is no, um, I forgot the phraseology that they use, clauses which do not apply. Listen, as doubting as the people of Israel were, as doubting as you and I can be, they finally inherited the promised land. They finally came into God's promise. Like Israel, we may fail along the way. Like Joseph, we may misinterpret what that dream really, the time frame for that dream. Like Abraham, we may misunderstand our circumstances. You know, how Abraham tried to, to, to tell Abimelech that Sarah was his sister. She kind of was, you know. It's always that little, I didn't really lie. I, you know, he tried to circumvent really what God was doing. The guy had more common sense. He goes, you know, how stupid of you. Somebody could have taken her. Then, then we would have we had God's guilt upon us. What are you thinking? When we try to help out God, what are we thinking? We make it worse at times. Like Abraham, we may misunderstand the circumstances, but listen, God never fails. We could sing it till we're blue, but sometimes we just sing it until it gets deep in our soul and we realize God doesn't fail. It doesn't say in the Bible for no reason that Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word will endure forever. I think that just goes over our head. Honestly, it's just another phrase. If God said those things, that means they must be what he said. But you can't understand what it is unless you realize God really means what he says, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I've been reading in the book of Leviticus. Let me tell you something. The, the Old Testament can, can confound you at times. When just... The, 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 what they had to do just to make sure they didn't mess it up with God. That's how holy God was, is, and how unholy they were and are and we are. Thank God we don't live under those conditions. The grace of God has come our way. We can now enter boldly into the throne of grace, seeking mercy and grace. We don't have to offer a sacrifice here, then do another one here, God's over here, and then do another one there. Oh, I gotta keep, and then keep doing it because you know what? We could get burned real quick. When the people of Israel disobeyed God, he says, don't come near the mountain. Don't touch it. And they did. <laughs> Zappo, gone. It's a little different today, thank God. But God never fails. And I think if we don't grasp the concept that God is really for us, he's not against us. I'm not a big proponent boxing and this, 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 this thing now that's come out, the MMA stuff and all that. But two of the, the, the most prolific female MMA artists, whatever they are, you want to call them, they both, they both lost. And you know who got blamed? Their, their manager got blamed. 
He got blamed because he didn't, he didn't, he or she, I'm not sure the guy, they didn't follow a good protocol for their opponent. Listen, God never fails. God doesn't have, oh, I got to go to plan B, C, D, E. God doesn't fail. God does not fail. If we don't realize that God's plan, and I think it was sung in this morning's song, God's ways are better than ours. We just have to understand that. We just have to accept that. And we just have to live in that. Because we're not God. Thank God that we're not God. Because if one of us was God, you know that some people sitting next to us wouldn't be here. Come on. Come on now. We know how wise Solomon was with his decisions, but thank God we're not God. Because we would change this world. We'd make it, we'd turn it upside down all right. God's timing is perfect. We can't say much about perfection in this life, but God's timing is perfect. It was sung in this morning's song. Listen, Galatians 4.4, 4, it's got nothing to, it's got to, <laughs> Galatians 4.4 4 says, In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Is it up there? Yes. Why that verse? You know what it took? To arrange everything in those days for Christ to be born. Prophecies to be fulfilled. People to be in power. Some to be removed out of power. Kingdoms to be raised up. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. In the fullness of time, he's coming on the scene for you. He's coming on the scene for me. Listen, God has a schedule too, you know. In the 80s and the 90s, you know those date timers became very popular. Everybody was, you know, any, anybody who was some semi-organized had these day timers. It took more time and effort to do a day timer than to actually get an accomplish a job. And now they have the electronic versions of those. They call it something else, and I just sit there and I laugh. Okay, just do your job. Forget about writing it. Just do your job. Those are helpful, but God has a schedule too. He's not limited by time. You know why? He created time. He's not limited by 20. He's not limited by daylight savings time. The sun came up this morning, regardless of whether we change the clock or not. The debate can go on about whether we should have daylight savings time or not. The sun's going to come up if God says the sun's coming up. He created time. He's not limited by space. God is all in all. God is our all sufficiency. How does God answer his prayer? And how does God intervene on her? How? He's not limited by space. God is God all by himself. It says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, where a vision was given to Jeremiah. He says, what do you see? I see an almond branch blossoming. Almond, the word almond means watching. Almond branch means watching. The word for Hebrew means watching. I, it's the Ital I, I use it the Italian word. I can remember it's called shakwa. Do you know what a shakwa in Italian is? Someone who's not on the ball. That's how I can remember that word. That's not what it means in the Bible, okay? But that's how I remember the word. God is watching over his word, it says in that verse, to perform it. God didn't just promise to Abraham and then say, you know what? You're on your way, bud. You blew it too many times along the way. I am sick and tired of this. Actually, God did say that to the people of Israel, to Moses, and Moses had to intervene. Sometimes we have to intervene for one another. You know, Job intervened for his, his children. At times, there are times I intervene, God, I don't know how, I don't know what's going on, but keep them. If they've done something stupid, keep them, please. Job prayed for his children because he goes, they're, they're having a celebration, but who knows, maybe they cursed God somewhere along the road. It's a little Old Testament. Let's, let's pr bring it into the New Testament version. He's watching over his word to perform it. He just didn't promise it. He just didn't say it and say, you know what? No, nah, I'm tired. I, 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 I got to do something different with the new people. If that was the, you know, ima imagine, you know, we're, we're busy trying to find life in other planets. Imagine God say, you know what? I'm done with Earth. I think there's some people on Mars I want to talk to. Maybe they can listen to me a little better. God does not do that. He's watching over the word that he's spoken to perform it. This is not something that can just be mentalized for a little while. 
during our time of prayer and fasting or during our little times of we get all hyped up. Of prayer. It's over the next day. It's not over as far as God's concerned. We can't go by the ups and downs of life. When I got saved and I experienced ups, I said, what's going on? You said my life would be smooth. Should have told me I'd have ups and downs. In Christianity, we're going to have ups and downs. They're learning processes. But like Abraham and like Joseph, they didn't waver. We need to wait it out. For if God has promised, he will bring it to pass. His, his word is yes and amen. It's not just phraseology. We've got to get out of the mindset of phraseology because the cliches exist too much in Christianity. Stop with the cliches, say the right word. Quote a scripture for a change. Because when we quote scripture, you know what will happen? It will go into the heart and soul, just like Joshua said, you know in your heart and in your soul when it makes sense. You know when someone is not following the Lord and you look at them, you know in their hearts. They, you know, you could tell they're just changing the topic on you, changing the story on you. That's what we're like. Because, see, there's been a deposit made in our spirit. There's been a mark that's been put on us that we belong to somebody. God's watching over his word that he's spoken to us to perform it. It may be, I hate to say it, 25 years from now. It may be 10 years from now. It may be tomorrow. It may be on the way out when you push that door going into the parking lot. I'll tell you what, though. It may not be today, but the revelation of it could be today. And when you live in that revelation, you know, hey, I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I'm persuaded I can in my own, but God can in his. It's not by might or by power, the Bible says, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's something that has to transpire in the spirit realm. And we've talked about this in the, about the spirit last week, Wednesday nights, Sunday, last Sunday morning. It's gotta, it's gotta, there's got to be a connection. <clears throat> You know when you, uh, I wish there was one here, I can't get it. I did it, I did it last week, but uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know when you go down somewhere, you turn the light switch on, what do you expect? The light to go on. Well, I went to the basement the other day. There's two light switches at the bottom of the steps. And I flick one on, what happens? And I'm flicking it up, nothing happens. I've got, you know, they got those, 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 those silly lights that kind of take a long time. It's slow process. I thought, all right, it'll come on. I'm flicking on. Why aren't the lights on? I flick the other one on, came right on. When the light switch is on and the Spirit of God is being allowed to activate that light, it'll come on. That light comes on in our heart. And like Joshua, you know in your heart and soul when something's been activated. Because the electric current, the spiritual current is working. Listen, believe. Be like Abraham. Be like Joseph. But take it one step further. We have to activate it with faith. And you know what? This is a, prog a progression. Look at Believe. Oh, yeah, anybody can believe. Faith. Oh, yeah. Now it's a little bit more. What's, what's your faith in? In the promise. There are too many promises, not only in the Bible, but that we've experienced that have come to fruition in our lives, not to realize the truth. Not one of those has faltered, Joshua said. They all have come to pass. They don't come to pass in our timetable. They don't come to pass in our own wishfulness. You know those 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 wonderful stores. Gotta have, gotta have this, gotta have that. If we put that mentality inside, say, God, what do you have? Not not something I gotta have. That's my wish list. But God, what do you have? God, when when God makes it real, and you know the penny drops, if you. The lights go on. Belief turns activated by faith, reminded by promise. All of a sudden, you have a, you're a different person. We become different people. We don't live under the cloud of today's atmosphere. Today's atmosphere is cloudy. Look at that blue sky over there. Listen, without, I don't know how people make it without Christ. I, I sit there at times, and, I, and I'm amazed. And I'm baffled. I said, God, I can see why people are crazy and do what they do. They, 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 they chase after what they chase after. 
I can see how that can happen. Because something wants to be satisfied. And it can't be without Christ. It can't be without faith in God. There are other substitutes. But these will not do. You know, we have all these substitutes for the real deal. Listen, there's lots of substitutes for butter, but there's only one butter. It's butter. Okay, tell that to my mother-in-law when she makes cookies. She's not using substitutes. It's butter. Okay, I'm not promoting butter, by the way, okay? But listen, we know what a, that, that scripture from Joshua, we know what a substitute is, and we know the real thing. We could say we believe, but if we don't mix it with faith, we could, it, we could believe in a lot of things. It's easy to believe in a lot of things, but it takes faith to believe in what God has said. The promises that we've experienced, you have to use those in your life to realize God's going to bring you somewhere else and bring other things to fruition. Otherwise, we become depressed. We become oppressed. We become neurotic like the world. We, don't, we can't be like that. The world is looking for something to latch on to that's different. There's a lot of spiritual warfare going on Warring war, war for people's lives and souls. We've got to have these things in our mind. Come on, let's all stand this morning. The conclusion, you fill in the conclusion. Are you just believing to get by? Do you have faith, but God, help my lack of unbelief. Help, help my, I believe it, but help my unbelief. Oh, that promise was 15 years ago. It ain't ever happening. Or are you realizing this morning that what God has spoken has been to pass. Maybe not what we were thinking, but what God wanted. Let's all pray this morning. Let's leave, let's leave different this morning. You know what? Make this day a, a daylight savings time. Make it like a, a life-changing time. A mind's changing time. Something changing today. Not because it's a, you know, like the daylight savings time, but because something happened in the spirit that caused us to think differently. Lord God, we come this morning, God. It's not man, but it's the word of God that if we allow it to come into the very depths of our hearts, as Joshua said, we know when those things hit our button, God, what's really right and wrong. We know when those things hit our heart and soul that you're in the middle of something, God. And this morning, as the word of God has come, Lord God, perform the very thing that you want to do in our lives. Things that you have spoken in times past that maybe have not come to full fruition, maybe are just halfway done, maybe have, are just getting started, Lord God. I, uh, this morning, Lord God, it's more than just believing, but God, mixing it with faith, Lord God, and with the understanding that you've done it in the past, you'll do it in our present, and you'll do it in our future, Lord God, because you're for us, Lord, and not against us. Cause that to have a change in our thinking of our mind and in our spirit, Lord to receive these things in the spiritual, not in the natural, God. Not some phony baloney, I'm just walking in the middle of the street stuff, but truly understanding, Lord God, of the spiritual implication and nature of the word of God. God, let us leave this morning different, Lord, not just because we came to church on Sunday morning, but because we encountered the living God along the way. And he helped us and he answered us, Lord, for what we're going through today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God, take God with you this morning. Amen.